we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Glory be to God. I welcome each and every one of you to this message. It's my prayer that the Lord God Almighty will bless His word in our hearts and cause His word to be fruitful in us. Let us pray. Savior, mighty King, we await your coming and we believe that you are near because everything, including your word, is pointing to what you have proposed in your heart. The foundation of this word was laid. Lord, today we ask, that you come and speak your word to us. Open our eyes to the truth. Awaken us in the spirit. We soak ourselves into the blood of Jesus. May your word purify our hearts and destroy everything that is capable of making these words useless and unfruitful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please share this video with someone. And subscribe and the lord god almighty will bless you in the name of the lord jesus christ you're welcome in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ once again please subscribe to this channel hosanna e. E. david and share this video with someone please support our ministry and the lord god almighty will bless you in jesus name today we're talking about as we await the return of jesus christ Everything is pointing to the return of Jesus Christ. What do we need to do as we await the return of the Lord? What are we to do? What is the Lord expecting us to do? That is what we're going to focus on in this message today. So let us look at the text for today. Matthew 24 41 to 50. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But notice that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour, as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord had made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing shall find so doing. Verse 47 to 51 Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods but an, if that evil servant shall say in his heart my master delay his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he look not for him, and in an hour that is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. May this never be a portion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The essence of this message is to wake us up, to remind us once again that we are not just living, but we are awaiting. We are not just alive and living life and to amass wealth for ourselves. But we are here and waiting for the return of the Master. 
as it was in the days of Noah. One thing that was very rampant in the days of Noah is disorderliness. There was no law. People had no fear of God in their hearts. People did whatsoever thing they deemed fit for themselves to do. If you look at the nations we live in today, disorderliness is the order of the day. People do whatsoever thing they want. We are living in a time where someone, a child, can just wake up and say, or come back from school and say, Mommy, from today, I want to identify as a cat. I mean, a human being identifying as a cat. And some say, um, I don't know if I'm a woman or I'm a man. I don't know if I am a human being. These are the days we are living in. And the government will say, well, it is your body. It is about you. It doesn't affect any other person. So whatever thing you call yourself, you go by it. We have no problem with that. That is the time we are living in right now. These are the very days of Noah. And you know what? The ark is ready. There is no other thing that has been certified to save from the destruction that is forthcoming, but the ark of Noah alone, which is the church. Look at the passage we read, John 24, verse 48. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayed his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkard. This is exactly what is happening today. Those who are blind, they are blessed. I know why I say so. If you don't see, you are blessed. If you see, and you see the level, if God reveals to you the level of corruption and deception in modern day Christianity, you will weep. You will weep uncontrollably. You will weep nonstop. This is the times we are living in right now. A lot of people now have concluded that the Lord said he's coming back over 2,000 years ago. He hasn't come. And now many men of God are building empires for themselves. Some even believe this demonic doctrine of kingdom now. Kingdom now. They believe that there's no need to go to heaven anymore, that we need to establish the kingdom of Jesus Christ here on earth, and then the kingdom of Jesus Christ will overthrow all the other kingdoms. And then we will take over the financial world. Christians will be in charge of the embassies in the world. That's, that's a lie from the pit of hell. The next thing we are expecting right now is a rapture. And the closer we get to the rapture, the higher the persecution for the righteous. So nobody should deceive you. Today, a lot of people have given up. The Lord has delayed his coming. So why don't we enjoy ourselves? Why don't we eat and drink? But is that what the Lord wants us to do? What does he want us to do? I want to point out about four things. They are not limited to this alone, but I want to point out four things that we must do. Remember, the topic of today's message is as we await the return of Jesus. As we await his return, what do we need to do? Number one, we have to put on the helmet of salvation and keep our garments white at all times. I'm going to explain. 
Number two, carry out the Great Commission, which is evangelism. Three, fight the good fight of faith. And number four, store your treasures in heaven. So let's look at them one after the other. First John chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Now look at verse 3 very well. And every man that had he, this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Before you go to the battlefield, you must consider safety. It's not just being trained. It's not just about carrying a weapon. It's not just about knowing who the enemy is. But you must also consider safety. Safety is very, very important. A lot of people today who are believers, many of them don't care about the helmet of salvation. That is why a lot of people are dying, those who profess Christ. Many of them are dying and are going straight to the fire of hell. Why? Because there are too many evil doctrines, false teachings that once you confess Jesus Christ with your mouth as your Lord and personal Savior and you believe in your heart, it doesn't matter how you live your life from that moment, you will go to heaven. But First John 3 verse 3 says, And every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Be holy. Be holy in all manner of conversation. Be holy in all you do. Holiness is the ticket to heaven. Holiness. We have our passport. Our passport is salvation. Jesus Christ has given us salvation. And it is the free gift of life. But for you to take this flight... Even though you have your passport with you, you need a ticket to fly. For without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Even if Jesus Christ dies for you, and you believe that he dies for you, if you do not purify yourself, you will not see the Lord. The helmet of salvation when Paul talks about the whole armor of God, he talks about the helmet of salvation. Your head contains your brain. It houses, your brain is inside your skull. And it is very, very important that you protect your head. And it is called the helmet of salvation. Even as we await the Lord, you have to make sure you are saved. A lot of people watch videos. When is the rapture happening? When is the Lord coming back? And they are so worried about when. And they care less about how prepared are we. As we are with the Lord, we must first of all make sure that we are prepared. Remember, the five foolish virgins. They were virgins. They weren't prostitutes. Even as at when the Lord returned, they were well dressed. They were still virgins. But they were not ready. They were not prepared. And they were left behind. That is how it is going to happen for many people. They will be left behind. Because their garment of salvation is not clean when the Lord is going to come. They were not ready. Let's look at 
1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God had not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the helmet of salvation, which is the hope of salvation. Put on your helmet and be sober, be watchful. As we await that day, be ready. Do not be so concerned about the day the rapture is going to take place and get carried away, get so immersed in that, that you forget about keeping your garment white. How do you keep your garment white when you are already saved? You have to make sure you confess your sins. First of all, you have to be careful about what you do and what you do not do. A Christian must be conscious of everything he does. Number one, because we must please the Lord. Number two, we must remain pure. Number three, so that we don't become defiled. Number four, so that unbelievers will not see our deeds and become hardened in their hearts. No. Number five, so that Satan will not hold anything against us legally. We have to be conscious of everything we do in this world. Are you watchful? When you do anything wrong, confess your sins. Soak your garments into the blood of Jesus and make them white. Make your garment white in the blood of the Lamb of God. For we have an advocate in heaven, Jesus Christ. He is the propitiation for our sins. Not for us only, but for the sins of the whole world. If you sin, you need no other sacrifice. Confess your sins to God. The second thing we need to do is evangelism carry out the great commission. Remember, Jesus Christ said, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Today, the laborers are becoming fewer and fewer by the day. There is something I told myself, and I know it is the truth. Almost everybody is preaching. But it's like nobody is preaching. I get so offended when I listen to most preachers. It's very difficult for me to listen to teachers, to preachers today. And, and, and not get offended. It's either they are preaching lies or they are preaching half truth. Which is even more dangerous than lies. Because lies can easily be detected. But when you preach, have truth is dangerous. It's it's very disappointing that Jesus Christ is no longer the main focus of most preachers today. Salvation is nothing to most preachers today. So you have people who are being taught how to pray, who are being taught how to be financially successful, but they are not saved. It's very, very disappointing. Matthew chapter 28, 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, not some, all things, whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Evangelism 
Let me ask a question. When last did you preach to someone? When last did you tell someone, Jesus loves you, repent, give your life to Christ? Those of you who are on social media, when last did you type in the comment section and say, all of you reading this, repent, give your life to Jesus Christ if you have not done so? Are you among those who like worldly posts on social media and comment on them and share them and even help social media algorithm to begin to propel evil things online? You don't know when you like something, you are promoting it online. Algorithm will promote it. Some of you are not aware. So you can see a Christian video that speaks the truth you don't like, you don't comment. But when you see something that is worldly, oh, you want to spend your time there. How many times do you preach on social media? How many times do you share the gospel with someone? Many of us feel it's not, a, it's not our problem. It doesn't actually concern us whether we preach or not. How many times have you supported those who preach the truth? How many times? Are you committed in your local church? When they say, let's go for evangelism, do you go for evangelism? When they call to support, when they call for financial support or moral support or organize prayers for missionaries, do you see it as important? Do you on your own pray for preachers, missionaries? How much do you take evangelism seriously? I held a man, I had a man some years ago in church. He was saying that he has resolved that he doesn't, he doesn't want to look at anybody anymore whether they preach or not he just wants to do his best god is not going to judge us collectively the judgment of god is going to be personal please be personal in course of preaching the good news be very very personal do not see the preaching of the good news as the work of the men of God. Do not see it as a special... Let me tell you, nobody is called to be an evangelist. Every saved Christian is an evangelist. Once you are saved, you have to evangelize this great commission. In Matthew 28, is not for some special people. It is for everyone, wherever you are, carry out the Great Commission. Especially in your character first. Your character is very important. I'm not saying you must be perfect first before you preach. No. If you want to be perfect first, it means a lot of people are not going to preach the good news. You work on yourself and spread the good news. Do not intentionally commit sin. But don't say until you stop making mistakes, until you stop committing sin totally, you will not preach. Because that's what a lot of people do. Even as soon as you hear the gospel and you believe in it, proclaim it proclaim it. You may have some things you're struggling with. That's your own struggle. That is a spiritual disease you are battling. That doesn't mean you are not saved. It could your, The day you give your life to Christ, all your bad characters don't go away. Your laziness will not go vanish instantly. Your um, your Lust may not vanish instantly. You need to grow into perfection. Perfection is by growth. Then number three, fight the good fight of faith. 
You have to fight against the flesh, against the devil, and against the world, against the dark powers of this world. Those who want you to fail, those who want you, the devil that wants to take your crown of glory, you have to fight the good fight of faith. How many of you are fighting? Do you fight to defend the gospel? Sometimes when we see people insult Jesus Christ, insult God, it's none of some of us feel it's none of our business. We don't want to offend anybody, we don't want to confront anybody. But if someone insults your pastor, you want to kill, you want to die, you want to fight, you want to defend him. <laughs> That's a sign that you are lost. It's a sign that you are lost already. If you can't defend God and the church, the body of Christ, people can insult Jesus. People can, uh, like comedians, can even insult God, insult the blood of Jesus, and you are laughing. But if someone says anything against your favorite man of God, even if they are fake ones, of which most of them are fake anyway, most men of God are fake. That is the truth. If not, Christianity will not be in this level of mess. If you strike the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. And that is exactly what the devil is doing. He strikes the shepherds so that when they get carried away by money, by fame, by women, by laziness, by different kind of things, D different fake doctrines, false doctrines, when they get carried away, he can have full time to operate and lead as many as possible astray. That is exactly what is happening today. May the Lord God Almighty deliver his church. Fight the good fight of faith. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Are you fighting the good fight of faith? You are a soldier of Jesus Christ. Please fight this battle to the end. Lastly, the fourth one. We must as believers we must store our wealth in heaven store your treasures in heaven matthew 6 20 but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moat nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through or steal how many of us prepare for our retirement? After people retire, do they live up to 20, 30, 40 years? But it depends on when you retire. A lot of people retire 60 to 70 years old. Many people retire at 60. At 50, you see most people working, 55 working, 60 to 70 people retire. But the moment you start working, you start preparing for your retirement. There is little money. It depends on the laws of your country and the organization you're working for or the government, police. In many countries, as soon as you start working, you contribute little money. You save little money every time. And it's for your pension. It's called pension. So that when you finally retire, they give you this money and you go and live your life. So it is a saving. It's a lifetime saving. How is it that we spent so many years, 35 years, 40 years preparing for our retirement. 
Retirement that will not last more than 30, 40 years. Some people, after their retirement, they don't live more than 10 years. They die. Some five years. But they spend so much time preparing for retirement. But do we spend time to prepare for eternity? The life in eternity. Do we spend time to prepare for it? How many people prepare for eternity? How many people lay their treasures in heaven? Do you deliberately do some things and say, Lord, I'm giving these arms to the poor because I want to reap the reward in heaven. I want to give this, this is my commitment to the body of Christ every month or every week because I know I am, I am going to reap and I'm doing it because I want to reap. How many of us do that? <laughs> Except we have not actually believed. How many of us give up court cases and give up our rights? Because we want God to count it for us as righteousness and get our reward in heaven. How many of us do evangelism as a way of investing into eternal life? How many of us write our wills? Unfortunately, a lot of people write their will. They will things to their schools, to the government, but not many people remember the church <laughs> how could people who believe in eternal life people who believe that the church is a kingdom they are dying to meet their god to reap what they have done and they write their will and they don't remember the church. <laughs> they know they will go, they, they will die, they will write everything, will share everything to their children, give some to church, to uh, schools, to organizations, to charity organizations. Giving to charity organizations is good. Giving to school is good. Giving to the government is good. But the Bible says that we should not stop doing good especially to those of the household of faith remember the church remember your local church some of you have buildings in different places and your church is leaky and it's, it's none of your problem. You have chairs in different companies. And you die. Some of you, you don't even have children. Hmm. Let me tell you. Me? You may say, what about you? I have resolved that I am not laying my treasures in this world. I, I know how much. I've told myself, this is how much. I'm going to. It's not a sacrifice. It is an investment into eternity. It's not sacrifice. It is an investment. Some of us will think we are doing so much for the Lord. Oh, do you know how much I give in this church? Do you know how much I slave myself in this church? Do you boast like that when you invest money into your business? Because you believe that you're receiving dividends, rewards, the profits. You don't boast that, oh, you, you don't want anybody to appreciate your effort, the financial investment you've made, because it is a transaction. But when you do it in church, you boast with it. You want, you need, you want people to recognize you. Sorry. It is ignorance. Do not lay your treasures in this world. Lay them in heaven. Let us pray. 
O Lord our God, thank you. As we await your return, help us. There are lots of things you want us to do. Help us to do them. There is no more time. Next week, we are going to talk about how close we are to the rapture. That means if by next week the rapture hasn't taken place, how close are we? The signs are so, so many. They are so undeniable. Lord, help us to get ready. Heal our slumber. Heal us from every slumber and lukewarmness. Help us, O Lord. Help us, O Father. I pray for as many who are listening to this message. May the Lord help you. May the Lord God Almighty help you. Touch you in every aspect of your life that you need a divine touch. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In any way you have one challenge or the other, I pray for you that the Lord will see you through. May the Lord step into that situation. Those of you who are looking for fulfillment, may the Lord open your eyes to know where you belong in the church, what and what you need to do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father Lord, I pray for as many that have been supporting this ministry, that Lord, you will supply all their needs according to your wishes. Supply all their needs, O Lord God. May financial boom be your portion in the name of Jesus. May the Lord step into those situations in your life. Thank you, Lord. I pray for as many who have been sharing our videos, growing this ministry. May the Lord God Almighty grow your life. Those who are recommending this ministry to other people because they believe that the truth we speak here is going to touch their lives and transform them. May the Lord God Almighty recommend you to your destiny help us in the name of Jesus. As you go about spreading the word of the Lord, may the Lord God Almighty support you and help you until you enter the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please share this video with someone and also subscribe to this channel don't forget to support our ministry our details are on our website tnwcfan.org look at the screen our account details are on the screen please support us what you give is what we use in running our ministries and also funding our charity organization we have no savings anywhere Whatsoever thing that comes, we channel it to running the ministries and also to fund our charity organization. Your money is well utilized. Uh, visit our charity organization uh, website, hdfng.org. Our uh, social media handle is at Hosanna David NGO at Hosanna David NGO. See what we are doing. Uh, that is what your money is doing. Uh, I have no other job to put into this charity organization. What comes out of the ministry is what I put, I channel into the charity organization. We have lots of projects that are running. Please support us. And the Lord God Almighty will bless you in Jesus name. Please tune in next week as we talk about how close we are to the rapture. Thank you and God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.hosannadavid.com Email us at info at hosannadavid.com God bless you.